Hey, what's going on Flash Mob? It's your boy Flash back again with another video. And today I wanna to talk about one of those items in your toolkit that is highly underrated, but extremely useful. That tool is your film monitor. We're gonna talk about some reasons on why you should have one and also go over some useful tools that come with a film monitor. Run the intro. So what is a film monitor? A film monitor is essentially a monitor that allows you to view what you're about to film. And what it also does, it gives you a bunch of useful tools that ensures that whatever you're filming comes out the best it could possibly be. So I know a lot of cameras nowadays have a monitor included with it, but the problem is that these monitors are very small. The issue with that is that it makes it very difficult for you to make critical decisions when you decide on how you wanna frame whatever you're about to film. And with that, it makes it difficult for you to make the necessary adjustments. On average, most film monitors have a screen that's about five to seven inches, which makes it really easy for you to see what you're about to do and make the best possible decision in each scenario. The film monitor that I use is from Small HD. And they offer a variety of different field monitors ranging from $329 to just over $2,000 depending on what you want. And the reason why I went with Small HD over some of the other options like Field World or Animus or you know some of those other ones because it's so easy to use and hosts a ton of customizable tools. There will also be a full breakdown video in the Filmmaker Pro course where I will show you how I personally set up my field monitor, a full breakdown of the operating system, and how I use my shortcuts. To sign up and be the first to receive new information and updates on Filmmaker Pro, I'll leave the link in the description below. On small HD monitors, it's really easy for you to add pages and add specific tools that you want to appear on each page. For example, I can set up a page that physically shows me my composition line so I can make a decision on how I want to set up that shot. This has been especially useful when I'm filming vertical and horizontal footage simultaneously. And then I can either add my exposure tools to another page or add it as a shortcut on the existing page so that that way I can always monitor and ensure that I'm nailing my skin tones. Focusing is something that you really need to pay attention to. And it's very difficult to nail your focus when you're looking at something on a tiny screen. On a small HD monitors, it gives you a bigger physical screen to look at, but it also gives you a really cool tool called Focus Assist. Focus Assist essentially allows you to see where the focus on the camera is set using a red indicator. What I love on the small HD monitors is that this feature is extremely customizable. So you can literally increase or decrease the intensity of the tool or you can even change the color of the indicators. What's also cool is that you can toggle this feature on and off. If you're like me, I hate the way Focus Assist looks in my frame. It's just really distracting and I don't like it. So what I usually do is I turn it on, get my focus, then turn it right back off and get back to what I was doing. Something that you should really consider as well when you're choosing your monitor is its build quality. You don't wanna go with something that's made out of plastic or any type of cheap materials because this is something that is in the field with you. And speaking from experience, it's gonna get nicked, it's gonna get dinged, it's gonna fall a couple of times. And if it's not made of quality materials, it'll happen once and that'll be it for the monitor. You don't want that to be you. The other thing I really love about the small HD monitors is its thin design and its mounting points on the top and both sides. This becomes especially useful when you wanna add additional accessories or if you wanna mount the camera in vertical mode when you're using it on a gimbal or something like that. I really love small HD monitors because it is so simple to use and it's extremely straightforward. If I wanna add a page, I pinch to zoom out, hit the plus button, and a new page is added, and add the tools that I wanna to use to that specific page. And just as simple, it's super easy to read. If the tool on the left is in green, that means it's active. If it's gray, it means it's inactive. And I can toggle that on or off anytime I want. For myself personally, I can't stand the knobs and dials and buttons and all those other things that you have to get through the settings on your monitors. I wanna be able to tap, tap, tap and get to exactly where I wanna be. So a few other things that you wanna try and ensure that your monitor has is an HDMI in and out, as well as an SDI in and out. For those of you who do not know what SDI is, it's essentially the same thing as HDMI. The only major difference is, is it uses a cable that can lock into the port. And the reason why that's important is because it makes that connection that much more secure so you don't have to worry about losing or dropping signal at any random time. 
And if you are able to get a monitor that gives you the ability to get DC power, that is also amazing. Cause I mean, yes, batteries are great because it's wireless and that's all great. But the problem is that batteries die really quickly. If you have the ability to plug it directly into a power source like an outlet or even into a larger battery like a V-mount battery, that just makes it a lot more easier for you to use this monitor for extended periods of time. If you are looking for your first monitor, I would suggest maybe going with the Action 5. It gives you all of the great tools that we talked about before, in exception to the SDI port. And it starts at 329. So you don't have to break the bank to get a monitor to start doing what you gotta do. If you wanna get the same exact monitor that I have, I'll leave a link in the description where you can pick it up on Amazon. Also, here's a few other accessories I would recommend getting with your monitor. So the first thing on the list is gonna be an SDI cable. This cable is what you're gonna to use to connect the camera to the monitor. Without it, you can't do it, so get one. The other thing I'm gonna recommend is getting a quick release plate, and the one that I use is from Condor Blue. And the reason why I suggest you get a quick release plate is because you're gonna be taking this monitor on and off your camera hundreds, if not thousands of times. So if you can make that process easier, why not? You'll also wanna look into a magic arm. There are gonna be times where you're gonna to have to configure your camera in a different way, and a magic arm just makes it easier for you. Also, sometimes you're gonna be using other people's cameras, and it's a really quick and easy way to attach the camera to the monitor and make it as simple as possible for yourself. If you do decide to go with a small HD monitor, I'm gonna recommend going with one of their sun hoods. Although these monitors do give you really bright screens and it's easy to see outside, there are gonna be situations where it, it's just not gonna be that simple. So a monitor hood is gonna allow you to be able to still see exactly what you're filming, even in direct sunlight. And the last thing I'm gonna say is the Sony MP batteries. I have about four of these batteries and on a general production day, these will help me last the entire day. I would recommend getting four to maybe six of them just in case along with a charger so that you never run out of juice for your monitor. To sum it up guys, my field monitor is something that I always have with me. Even if I'm called out to a job where I don't have to bring anything, like everything's provided to me, cameras, lenses, everything, I will still bring my own monitor just because I know I don't wanna look at no tiny screens and having something with all those tools built into it allows me to do my job to my best ability. The full monitor operation guide will be in Filmmaker Pro along with a ton of other subjects such as editing, building your business, technical skills, and much more. Make sure to sign up for our newsletter so you can be one of the first people to gain access once it's all ready to go. Also, make sure you hit that like button if this video helped you in any way. And if this is your second or third time visiting my channel without subscribing, just hit the button. Hit the button, subscribe. And if you have any other questions, make sure you leave it in the comments below. But thanks again guys for watching and take care of yourselves. Peace.